Robert Wyatt, as a good Marxist, do you approve of this scheme? Sounds well, good what one. a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, you're a lifelong right. famous Marxist. Go for I, it. I, I'm just in here quietly remembering not to swear and say any rude words because I'm on Radio 4 and you throw that at me. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'd just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I benefited a lot from, from, uh, from help from public funds, which I've tried to give back in my own mm. way. I mean, uh, I've been in a hospital which is publicly funded and uh, an American uh, film actor said, I'll take you to the best <clears throat> hospital in the world, assuming it would be a private one, and he found out that I was at it and it was an NHS one in England, the one I was at, after having done all his research. So, And I came out and I worked, and if I hadn't been there and uh, had that opportunity, I would have gone under, so I'm mm. very grateful for that. We just want to remind people of your distant past, if you don't mind, by way of a short musical bridge. Just listen to this. Is it worth it? A new winter coat and shoes for the wife And a bicycle on the boy's birthday it's just a rumour that was spread around town By the women and children Soon we'll be shipbuilding That's you in the early 1980s with Elvis Costello's shipbuilding. Um, in the, at the moment, though, you are now more or less 100% a songwriter, not a public performer, aren't you? You've, you've more or less stopped public performing. <laughs> yes, I, I lost... I mean, I never... Before, I did perform that on telly once. Yeah, no, uh, I can't. Uh, I've tried singing in public, and I just, uh, I just faint, faint with fear. It's, uh, it's too exposed somehow. I, I used to be a drummer, which is easy. You can hide behind a desk, like you know, like we were doing something to lean on. <laughs> yes. But um, uh, I couldn't handle singing. I'm not even sure I could remember the words or anything like that. So, uh, but I guess I just do the backroom stuff. I mean, I. It, Sounds a bit pretentious, but I think of myself as a composer now. Mm. Well, you see, the, the backroom stuff you've got, there's a project, your, your songs are being done, uh, and a special thing at the London Jazz Festival, tonight at the Festival mm. Hall, and we should say broadcast, I think, 11.30 at night on Saturday on Radio 3, so people can hear that. Um, can we roll back a bit to the beginnings, though, how, and how, how you grew up and what, what made you into a musician? Were you, were you a happy child and teenager or not? Um, a happy child, a uh, teenager... No, it's all started to go wrong, I think, around puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't handle it. You know, homework and girls, you know, what's the choice, you know? How can you deal with this mm. combination? <clears throat> no, I, would, I, I couldn't handle anything from the age of about six, but it was great before then, so I've got that mm. <laughs> store of happiness to draw on for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, in fact, it is, it is, I've been, it's 50 years now since I've been in this building. I was brought here when I was about four because my mother was produced on... On mm. Women's Hour, in fact. Oh. And uh, I've been sitting in the foyer outside there about exactly 50 years ago. And yeah. remember, remembering. Right. Yeah, and that yes. was, I was very happy then. You're not yes. saying they've never let you back in broadcasting <laughs> No, no, since. I've been back since, but <laughs> I just remember it is actually 50 years since the first yeah. time I come here. Gosh. Yeah, um, no, I, I, I just couldn't um, understand a thing at school. And um, so I used to sit home playing records and drawing and stuff. And, and even then, the six years after I left school, I... I I had jobs like, well, I worked in a forest as the first one and I did washing up. And then then they um, stopped conscription and, and replaced it with uh, beat groups. So <laughs> instead of young men having to go into the army, they all had to go to Germany in beat groups. Mm. Uh, so I went into one of, one of those. And there you found you had the talent. No, but I, you, you, you had a drum kit and... <laughs> <laughs> It's all you really need in a big room. <laughs> yeah, and and so that you know, so then you know, a, a living was uh, earned and stuff like that. You went pretty wild in in the late sixties, didn't you? I mean, you you had you toured with Jimi Hendrix, you did guest sessions with Pink Floyd, you had a group and left it. Um, well, they kicked me out. But what for? Uh, they didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're probably drunk and disorderly, that sort of thing. Mm. <laughs> Do you remember a lot about the, those? Well, and early uh, no, I think I'll just explain why, really. Yes, sir. Mm. No, I, all, I, the only, I, I, all my courage then was Dutch courage. I mean, I did, you know, I did like to drink, and that's how I got through the whole business of performing on stage and everything like that. Mm. And so it's a bit of a blank, really. So actually, the stage fright was always there, but it was just yeah, I've always had it. Yeah, because what I liked about music was the music. Mm. Uh, I, um, I hate business of 
of being sort of um, I think I don't like being judged and assessed in rows of uh, headmasters and yes. reviewers and what yeah. what the name changes, but the feeling's the same. You uh, mentioned being in hospital, best hospital in the world, and all the yes, rest of it. We, we, we should we should mention why you you fell out of a window. Yes, I did this thing. Yes, um, I did, yes, that's true. And uh, was that the drink again? Uh, it was. Yes, it was. Mm. Well, well, it wasn't just the drink. It was several. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. so, so know, several sort of substances whisk- assisted. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, no? several drinks, Southern Comfort, yes. and whiskey don't mix. Oh. I can tell anybody that now around the table. Thank you. <laughs> Try anything else. <laughs> Thank you very much for that advice. <laughs> so, I mean, there, there you are in, in Stoke Mandeville. I mean, mm. h- how low emotionally did did you go? I thought it was great there. First of all, <laughs> everything that's done for you, and you're not having to worry about the rent and you know everything like that. In fact, they bring you breakfast, they, they wash you, and. Um, Oh, it's terrific, and uh, also I had because I didn't have to worry about um, the band. I tried to form a band called Matching Mole, and I was always worried about you know getting work and whether the, everyone was getting paid. Um, suddenly, all these responsibilities of adulthood that were would creep up on us all, however much we try to avoid them, they suddenly fell away again. Yeah, you were back to that's before right before you were six years yeah, old when yeah, you were happy. Yeah, so you can just. Uh, but uh, out of all that, in 1974 came the Rock Bottom album, exactly, which yeah. everybody raved about. It was very personal, it was very strong, it was, <clears throat> people say, possibly the best work you, you ever did or, or will ever do. Well, because I'd had a year in hospital to think about it without having to think about anything else, really. So I just sat there and thought and imagined music, really, mm. for a year. And then after that, you rather surprisingly did a cover version of the old Monkeys song, I'm a Believer, which I have to say <laughs> sounded a great deal better oh, well. from you than it ever did from the Monkeys. Oh, well, and no, and no, you decided good. to do a lot of, of cover songs. Well, no, it's just that there was, came a time when uh, I, I write very slowly and not quite enough, but I really started to get into singing. Oh, cause after the accident, I couldn't really play drums anymore, so I concentrated on what had previously been a sideline, which was singing and... And I sort of like to try different things out. And you write for yourself, you can... You may, it's interesting, but if you do what other people uh, have written, obviously it stretches you, you know. Mm. And so I just try things out. And I did The Monkeys for a... I don't know why I did that. I, actually, somebody said... I didn't... It wasn't even the song I meant to do. I certainly <laughs> wouldn't have done it if I'd have known it was by Neil Diamond. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was by by uh, the other Neil. What's that, Neil? You know. Is it, is it uh, true that when you went on top of the pops, I think with that song, that they couldn't hack the wheelchair? <laughs> yes. Is, that, said, tr- is, is that true? This yeah. story. Tell us. <laughs> it was like you know, it was like that thing on the League of Gentlemen. No, this is a no, this is a fa- no, this is a local shop. This is a family program. You know, I wonder if you'd sit in something that didn't look quite so like a wheelchair. But they wanted you in perhaps a rocking chair, like Valdunian. No, no, would have been big nice. Basket <laughs> things that um, I, I don't basket. know what. Oh, well, I don't know what it was. I can't remember. <laughs> But I lost, uh, yeah, I wasn't having that, really. What, what did you do? What did you say to No, him? I stayed in the wheelchair, but he said, well, you won't be back on top of the pot scan. <laughs> True, that is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, no. Yes, it was. You know, it's um, neutral. The, the politics, like, yeah. politics have always been around. In the 80s, you did songs for the miners and the Namibia, Cuban political songs. Have, have your, has your politics changed and mellowed at all as you've got older? Uh, neither, no. No, no I, I, my politics aren't anything. I, I'm simply a reactionary. And uh, uh, reacting against so that if if a ship's tilting tilting a uh, great deal you know, to the to the right, oh. I will stand as far as possible on the left. You know, it's just a simple question of mm. you know engineering mechanics, isn't it? I don't know. You put so, weight uh, on one side just to get a balance. That's <laughs> proaction, I would have thought. <laughs> You're a proactionary. Oh right. Well, whatever it is. No. Well, I mean, whatever it is, where everything everything's tilting. I mean, there are a whole load of reaction attitudes that I thought had sort of died out as a consequence. So in the days when Old Labour had more of an ascendancy, were you more of a centrist sort of...? Uh, No, I never thought they did have much of an ascendancy because um, at that time, I mean, people people talk about the 60s when everyone was a left-wing thing. Actually, in the 60s, there were hundreds of very violent wars being fought with our taxes Mm. and governments. I don't think the the left ever had a... So now, with with, with, with the the general kind of lurch lurch to the right or the centre right, you're you're standing firmly on the left hand side. Well, I I mean, I don't stand firmly on anything. I just sort of, (laughs) I had to have my likes and dislikes and my loyalties and disloyalties. Yeah, and I think. I think this government's one of the most unpleasant I can ever remember, but that may be just personal. <laughs> well. There you go. So, do you still belong to any party? Do you, you used uh, to be well, a CP, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I used to be a CP, but it got a bit right-wing, so I left that. 
<laughs> well, Moya can tell us if it's actually a good idea to stand on the side of the ship that's up, up here. It probably is, isn't it? Uh, I think if you get enough of you there, it helps. <laughs> that's, that's the problem, really. If not, if you want to leap off, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> you're the yeah. So anyway, the Festival festival Hall songs we can hear on Radio yeah. 3 this well, Saturday. This, all, I'm all, all excited tonight. about this. Is, I mean, obviously... Are you going to be there in be, the audience, kind of... This is what they said. Half wishing they, you were performing? No, not half nothing. No, I'll be sitting there at the back with a paper bag on my head. And in fact, I'm thinking of sending my son as a substitute and pretending. No, but it's wonderful for me. This Annie Whitehead uh, has arranged uh, my songs to be done by this band, and they they've never been done live because I don't do anything live. And I'm just so grateful that somebody thought of it. Oh. Dave Groom at Nottingham yeah. in Nottinghamshire Council, and then that Sirius have brought it, brought yeah. it, wanted to bring it to London, and it's got. Julie Tippett singing my songs. I mean, she's a wonderful singer, you know. Magic, magic night. Have a good uh, evening of it. Thank you very much.